This is a 105 watt 8 port, it has 4 USB-C and 4 USB-A ports, power adapter. So the model name is HX100P7. It has some specifications here I'll put up on screen for you. Although it has 8 different ports, the different ports have different capabilities. So in general, the top ports provide more power than the lower down ports. Um, so the first USB-C output, for example, can go all the way up to 20 volts at 3.25 amps, like 65 watts. The second USB-C output does 5, 9, and 12 volts, so it can't get quite as high watt-wise. And then the third and the fourth USB-C outputs are limited to 5 volts, but they do a respectable 3 or 4 amps out the 5 volts there. Now the USB-A outlet, the top USB-A outlet is um, multi-voltage compa compatible if you have a device that will negotiate that. So it goes 5, 9, 12, um, and up to 20 volts at 1.5 amps. The other three outlets are just 5 volts at 3 amps. So a 3 amp USB-A outlet is still pretty darn good. So you know this is designed for charging devices and it'll do a pretty good job of charging devices. You just need to make sure that the devices with the largest power draw are up near the top of these sets here. So I received this to review for free. Um, if you wanted to buy it, it would cost you $45. They have not paid me for my review, and my opinions are my own. So in the box, you get the charging brick itself. It has feet down here so it can sit this way. You could potentially also sit it up that way, although then the feet in the bottom panel would show. And it includes here the US adapter, because I have the US version. They also sell an EU version, which presumably comes with an EU adapter. Um, so this is a pretty decently long cord here that will allow you to put this on a desk and then power this elsewhere. So this is about five feet long, and it has a relatively standard kind of figure eight outlet here. So if this is not for your particular power system, it's potentially possible you could just source a local cord with the right plug at the end. Um, and that just, you know, plugs in the back there. So I'm going to test this. We're going to verify the output of some of these outlets and see how it works when you run them all together. I believe that it can do all the outlets all the time, um, but we're going to check that and make sure that when you plug something into the second or third outlet here that doesn't derate the top outlet. So when you plug it in, there is a single small blue light down here that lights up indicating it has power. So it doesn't do an excessively large amount of light pollution, but it is a, a bright blue light as opposed to a soft red light. Alright, according to the manual here, we have 65 watts, 20 watts, 20 watts, 20 watts. And then on the quick charge ports, we have 30 watts, 15, 15, and 15 watts. Now it does list here dual port mode where it's talking about multiple ports. Um, so we're going to have to pay attention and see if these derate a bit when we have more than one port being used. All right, first thing we're testing is the top 65 watt power delivery port. It negotiated basically 20 volts at 3 amps. Um, it's doing 63 watts here. So it's 19.68 at 3.2 amps, giving 63 watts output. So I'm going to say yes, it can provide the 65 watt power delivery port out of this first port here. All right, I've plugged a second meter into the second USB-C port. This is rated at 20 watts, and it is negotiated up to 12 volts at 1.56 amps. And so that power is 18.9. So it's pretty darn close to the 20 watts that it says it's supposed to be giving here. Uh, I kind of suspect they're fudging the numbers there. I think this guy here, you know, the, the, the maximum voltage there is 12 volts at, well, it says 12 volts at 1.67 amps. So according to the box, we should be able to do 12 volts at 1.67 amps, and all I'm getting is 12 volts at 1.56 amps. Um, so, you know, 18, 19 watts, maybe not the full 20 out of the second port, but the key thing here is we're getting 63 out of the top port, almost 20 out of the bottom, the second port down. Um, you know, it's pretty much operating both ports at the same time. Now, if you're mounting it vertically like this, the large part of the port is on the bottom, so on your cable, you might have to put the cable in kind of the way you would think would be upside down. If it's mounted sideways, that's less of an issue because you know it's kind of sideways. All right, 
So the bottom two USB-C ports are limited to five volts max. And so with a laptop plugged in there, it's doing 2.8 amps, so it kind of says three amps max. Um, it's only doing about 14 watts out of those bottom two USB-C ports. So these bottom two ports do USB-C power delivery, but they only go up to five volts, three amps max. So you're really going to be getting 15 um, oh, sorry, it says they do 4 amps max, but I think my cable is limiting this to 3 amps max. So it says they'll do 20 watts total there. All right, I have confirmed if you plug a load into the quick charge port, um, and that load is a 5 volt load, it will degrade this USB-C 2 port to a 5 volt as well. So there's an interaction between the top USB-A port and the second USB-C port. Um, we're not even getting a full 5 volts out of this guy. It's down to like 3.86 volts at 3.5 amps. Um, so the voltage is sagging on that USB-A port. Um, but basically my advice is if you're using the second USB-C port and you want higher than 5 volt output on that guy, just leave your USB-A one port empty. Use these three here. They're five volts at up to three amps, so you're getting 15 watts charging there. Um, but that way your USB-C port here can power negotiate at a higher voltage. All right, I'm testing the top three USB-C ports. We're getting 63 watts out of the top one. We're getting 20 watts, 19 point something out of the second one. The bottom two USB-C ports are five volts only, but they go up to four amps, and I'm getting almost that. It's 3.87 amps. The voltage is sagged to 4.72, but you know, you're gonna get close to 15 to 20 watts out of that guy there. The one wrinkle I've found here is with the USB-C2 port. It'll go up to 12 volts, and it's supposed to do 1.67 amps to get a full you know, 20, amp, 20 watts. Right now we're at 19.3 watts, so you know, close enough. Now, if you plug something into your USB-A1 port, which is the multi-voltage quick charge port, um, and it's a 5 volt load, it will negotiate the voltage down to 5 volts for both ports. And so what that means is that a load on this USB-A1 is interfering with the power coming out of USB-C2 because now it's down to 4 volts because I'm, I'm doing 3.5 amps here. Now, if I move this load down to be less, so, you know, make it a, say, a 3 amp load, the voltage goes up to 4.6 here and gets to 4.9 there, and we're getting 6 or 7 watts out. Um, so when I unplug that quick charge port, this guy stays at 5 volts for a decent amount of time. It, it takes a while before it notices, hey, there's nothing plugged in down here. I can renegotiate this power. Um, and so you can see there it just started renegotiating the power. Um, and so eventually it will renegotiate back up to 12 volts, do its full 20 watts. But the takeaway is... If you want the second USB-C port to work at full power, don't use the first USB-A port. Now, I haven't noticed this problem with the rest of the USB-A ports. So if I plug into the second USB-A port here, it works independently, and I can do, you know, three amps out of that without affecting the USB-C port. All right, so if you have a quick charge capable phone and you want the full power out of this USB-A port, just plan on not using that USB-C2 port. These guys always do five volts at three amps, that's fine. These two guys here always do five volts, um, three or four amps, and so that's fine. So the only real interaction here is between USB-C2 and USB-A1. Um, they cannot both be operating at the same time at different voltages. And so if you put a five volt load here, this thing will drop down to five volts and lower the power output. Now the USB-C1 power delivery, that guy's always independent. It's always been driving, you know, 63 watts out of that guy. All right, so final thoughts here. At this price point, most of the ports work completely independently. So these three ports, those two ports, you can just use five volts out of them all day. Um, this guy is independent. It does up to 65 watts power delivery. The only wrinkle are these two guys here. Um, you know, basically, if this guy goes to five volts, that guy also has to go to five volts. So you can't quite use all eight ports completely independently. Um, you have to keep in mind the connection between these two ports. Um, but, you know, you could do four USB-C power 
deliveries and three USB A at, at three to four or three amps. Um, you know, and, and that's plenty for you in most situations. So I think this is a still a, a pretty good deal despite the little wrinkle there. A lot of power adapters will degrade certain ports if you start using other ports. And so that's not uncommon for these power adapters to have that. Um, it's annoying that the manual doesn't super clearly indicate that, um, but once you know it, you can work around it. In general, my advice here is just don't use that port, or if you want to use this port, don't count on that port providing full power.